those pictures, let me tell you the bronze medal position has already been decided today. The West Germans beating the Soviet Union 3-2 earlier this afternoon. But now, in the Wilston Stadium, we're concerned with which of these two teams will take gold and silver. Neither have won the World Cup before, although the Australians have finished third on two occasions. The atmosphere absolutely marvellous. 20 years on after England's footballers won the World Cup just down the road at Wembley Stadium. Could England's hockey players do the same this afternoon? Your match commentators, Jim Duffy and Barry Davis. So let's check the final lineup from a squad of 16 players of the England setup who've done their sport proud and who've captured the imagination of the sporting public, many of whom were previously unaware of the skills and intricacies of the game of hockey. They comprise, for the record, two teachers, two involved with computers, a doctor, a transport manager, a quantity surveyor and a news agent, two concerned with sports administration and sales, and one recent recipient of a degree in geography. It's the same lineup which started that memorable semi-final against West Germany. Sean Kelly, who scored the opening goal of that contest and has a total of four in the championship. But the top scorer is in the Australian lineup, Rick Charlesworth, the number seven, who has scored seven times. Their lineup too is unchanged, and it has to be said that they go into this final as the favourites. Any side which manages 29 goals, and so many of them coming from open play, 20 indeed from open play, has to start a final as the likely winners. And here is the Australian Member of Parliament, Rick Charlesworth. He's also a doctor of medicine, and used to captain Western Australia at cricket. So you could say he's a pretty all-round character. The final words with Richard Dodds having the last say. Dodds there with the armband who played such a crucial role yesterday. Right the way through the 70 minutes and the two extra periods of 15 minutes and will be remembered in particular for that quite incredible clearance off the line on the reverse sticks well the organizers of this tournament being the management and their team have deserved this day already the color of the medal is an improvement on the success of the Great Britain squad in the Los Angeles Olympics where we won the bronze. And our opponents today are the team that we left without a medal on that occasion. It's taken the headlines all around and it's producing some very interesting banners. Uh, you can't quite see the bottom of that one, but I'll tell you, it's uh, here we are, thank you very much. England's got them by the Sean and Kelly's. Well, in the nicest possible way, let us hope so. But plenty of support for the Aussies, including a band just to the left of the commentary box who had their own particular cry. seconds before the start and the first stick to play the ball is that of Terry Walsh of Australia and the Australians all the way through have shown an emphasis on attack and it is to be hoped that England will be able to do the same and it is also to be hoped that we can feed the ball through well to the front players England back in the white strip, white shirts. 
for each side in their traditional colours. First close up of the ball from Martin Grimley for the Australian goalkeeper Neil Snowden, one of their survivors from the Olympic Games. Half slipped by Paul Barber. Here is Colin Batch. Hughes got back. And there was an obstruction. This is the 21st meeting between the two countries. Australia have won 10, England 4. There have been six draws, including the last one, which ended at 3 all. With the Australians winning 5 3 on penalty strokes. Paul Barber. David Faulkner. John Potter on the right, and his part in this final will surely be very significant. He and Martin Grimley, Jim Duffy, have quite a role to play. I think they've got uh, the most important roles. Um, Australia do attack down the flanks very well, and I think Martin Grimley has got the most difficult marking Grant Mitten today. To Osworth to Neil Hallgood, young man who's come into the Australian side since the Olympics, scored four times. He's a plumber from Brisbane. But uh, his coach, Richard Agis, was saying that uh, considering the number of shots he's had on goal, he ought to be top scorer in the championship. Doesn't hesitate, bangs the ball across. If he sees the side of the goal, he has a go. Maybe a good moment to give you some of the measurements. The pitch in hockey, 100 yards by 60 yards. The goal is seven foot high by four yards wide. Down in Birmingham. Well stopped by David Faulkner. And it went away from Grant Mitten. For just that vital second. And when he got in his shot, you could say from the goalkeeper of the tournament, Ian Taylor. First penalty corner given, with the ball coming up dangerously off an English stick. I'm afraid that was a stupid mistake by the England team. Yesterday they conceded a lot of short corners in exactly the same way, and it uh, looks like they've started off in the same vein. Two umpires, incidentally the same two. Monsieur oh. Renault and Santiago Deo of Spain. Renault, the one we're looking at now. John Bestel and Taylor scooped it away and Rick Charles was a little disappointed that uh, a penalty strike wasn't given the ball was lost for a moment but Mr. Renault had a good look and wants a word with somebody and it looks as though it's Paul Barber And also Rick Charlesworth, who maybe were discussing the umpire's verdict with differing views. A long corner taken by Craig Davis, but uh, the umpire not happy. He hadn't restarted the clock. John Potter. That's an England hit in. taken as the Australians have not retired the required five yards. Barber. Pity because Grimley was well placed and had room to manoeuvre. Potter. Long corner. Yes and it's gone in. Whoosh the scorer.
Terry Walsh taking advantage of a bouncing ball to give Australia the lead to score his third goal in the championship and to put Australia on top in this final. Came up off the stick of Grimley and Taylor left rather exposed. Walsh making his 167th appearance for his country. One of the senior players at 33 next month. And the crowd doing their best to getting them going. And they've started rather slowly. Well, that's the worst possible start England to have. Um, the Australians in the previous matches of this uh, tournament have won the games very early on, and it was important for England to stay in this game as long as possible. But uh, I wouldn't count them out yet, as long as they keep him with a chance as this game goes along I'm sure they'll be in with a shout at the end Le Mans fairly hopeful and if you're one of those who have suddenly discovered this sport let me tell you that uh, a goal can only be scored when it's struck by an attacker in the circle Giovanni, Hughes, Mitten, obstruction by Hughes. John Bestel. Good stop by Hughes. Imran Shawani. Take a batch, putting it out. It's a great attempt by Paul Barber to find Stephen Batchelor. One of the most significant things about the Australians scoring early is that it will settle their nerves. You might be surprised to the suggestion that they have them but so often in the past they've gone in as favorites and not made it they were cd1 in los angeles finished fourth the thought to just have to turn up in the 76 olympic final and lost to new zealand fourth in 64 in the olympics runner up in 68 and so often when fancied to take titles they haven't done so Although their recent record in the championship trophy which is a contest for usually the top six sometimes the top seven Gave warning of their performance here. That's certainly true, Barry, but in the Champions Trophy, they don't actually play a final. It's done on a pool table, a, a league table, and uh, no finals are played. It usually comes to the semi final finals. The Australians usually crack. But this is why it's so disappointed that England haven't made a good start. Roman. Potter. by John Bestel and the long corner is given by the Spanish umpire Stephen Batchelor prepares to take and uh, somewhat undercut the ball a hit not taken from the right place for Australia quickly by Dodds. Curdy was obstructed. Potter. Away by Rick Charlesworth. Birmingham. Well, Mitten doing well to keep it in. Good cover by Shawani. And a good run. hit for the challenge by Birmingham Hughes and England failed to get it to get it into the box into the circle I should say Hughes Dr. 
for Richard Dodds, looking to have the same influence as yesterday. And we've had 10 minutes of the contest, and Australia a goal to the good. Came into this championship with a good record indeed before today they have gone 16 consecutive matches <laughs> winning them all but here's Shawani and the umpire looking and waiting England get the hit just outside the circle and then the umpire I don't know whether he changed his mind but he certainly pointed one way and then the other that was the challenge that all the debate was about. Only to batch by Taylor. Good challenge by Barber. afternoon. Holgood was unmarked. And then the main, as you can see from the flags, the wind blowing left to right. Yard hit to England. David Falkner to take. Falkner who plays for Haven't. Grimley. His body. Good challenge by Barber. Richard Lamont resists the challenge of Paul Good. And the clock will be stopped and a word will be spoken to Paul Good. I think that was something of the exuberance of youth. So determined to get in. But the charge from behind was clear for all to see. First warning against uh, Neil Horwood, Horgood, for the challenge on Richard Lemann. Barber. Over a waste of the free hit. Charlesworth. Horgood. She would have mean about uh, getting the ball into the circle quickly. Craig Davis. John Bestel. Who, like Davis, comes from Perth, Western Australia. Where well, the wind is being used for a different sport at the moment. It's where the America's Cup is taking place. Charlesworth. Grimley getting there ahead of Mitten. Ball lifted dangerously. Charlesworth also comes from Western Australia, from Perth. Curly. Hasn't really been able to get into the match yet, which is now being blessed by some pleasant sunshine. too high from Grant Mitten. But the 
message there for Martin Grimley. Do like to use the width of the field, the Australians. And they've got such pace with their wide men. Barber. Faulkner. England hit for the challenge by Charlesworth from uh, Potter. 15 minutes have elapsed. And the dangerous play was by Curley. I, quite can't, I can't understand that at all because Davis actually played the ball towards Curley there. The, Sp the Spaniards didn't like the, the wildness of uh, Sean Curley's swing. Hughes, not used, Lamant, Potter to the right, oh, he got caught in two minds. <laughs> and Ian Taylor on his haunches, quite happy to watch that one go by. And, uh, the, before the start of this tournament, he was advocating the possible end of the circle in the sport. I'm not sure that he's right about that. I think it heightens the tension, particularly from the penalty corners. And also makes the game unique and thereby very different from uh, association football. Good challenge by Dodds. Shiwani. Hughes. Shiwani. Seen a lot of attacking player from the Australians, but they showed on that occasion that they're good markers and coverers too. Bestel, David Bell, the skipper, distraction by Hughes. Curdy to Dodds, two over on the right side. Another free hit to England. Cut out by Trevor King. The man who scored the only goal so far, Walsh. A good ball through to Hallgood. Mitten on the far side of the circle. Good cover by Potter. And Hallgood, in turning to play the ball backwards, obstructed Potter, and England hit. That was a very good play by Johnny Potter there, getting back on his man. It's interesting to see also that the England fullbacks are pushing up as high as they can on the Australian forwards. Previous matches, the Australians have played against defences which have been happy to concede a lot of space and therefore give the Australians time to get the ball out of defence. England are actually pushing up on the Australians, making it as difficult as possible for them to get good ball out. by Le Mans. I think it was uh, feet by Charlesworth. Stephen Batchelor. 16 yard hit. King to Bell. Dodds in. The ball played up onto the body of Grant Mitten. A challenge on uh, Warren Birmingham. It's not a particularly good tournament, just 25.
stopping action, but uh, it's just a hit in for the ball going out of play. Barber. That's a good ball for the man. Potter. Bachelor comes inside, then goes outside. Stopped by Trevor King. Instruction given against Stephen Bachelor. Man, bided his time well. Instruction by King. And I think significant signs that England are settling to their task. Potter. Unfortunately, the feet of Bachelor. Taken from the wrong place, and uh, Mr. Dale gives the hit to England. Good start by Craig Davis and by David Faulkner. Well, the only one who made that dangerous was the Australian. Yes, I think the umpires fooled a bit by them. They were trying to make that as dangerous as possible so they could get the free hit. It's, um, at the moment, there seems to be a lot of confusion about the ball being in the air and being dangerous or not dangerous. It, I think a lot of the, the players are confused as well. But again, it was good to see that David Faulkner had pushed up from behind and actually given support to the midfield. Kelly, being followed everywhere by uh, Bestel. A typical piece of determination by the Englishman. Play by Curley. Yes, he's closing down the players very quickly and again making it difficult for the Australians to get the ball out of defence. Shawani. Three in the circle. The challenge by Birmingham. And it's an England hit just outside. And hopes are quite definitely growing. to have held off Birmingham. And the way England are now playing makes one regret even more the way they started and conceded the goal. On those three hits from the side there, I'd just rather see England bring out players from the back who can actually hit the ball extremely hard in the circle. Australia won a, a short corner very early on the game by bringing out their full backs and actually just slamming the ball into the circle, waiting for the England, English players to make a mistake. And I think we should do likewise. Penalty corner given because the ball came up off the pad of Ian Taylor, too close to Grant Mitten. Extremely difficult demands on a goalkeeper in that situation. to hit in. Terry Walsh prepared to strike. And the umpire not happy with the placing of the ball. He is now. Bestel. The lovely strike. And Australia have a 2-0 lead. But I'm going really seemed, against the run of play, I think. It yeah. seemed to go far too high. I've... To me, that seemed to go directly and above the backboard and therefore should have been disallowed. Well, if Taylor didn't touch it, but I noticed he didn't complain. And the umpire's decision, correctly final even if it doesn't get universal approval. So England nil, Australia two. And 
and ten and a half minutes of the first half remaining. Hughes. He obstructed. Turning in front of his man, shielding the ball by doing so. England in considerable need of an early strike back. Good play by Batch. He was tripped by Hughes. Australia, as you saw at the start of the programme, scored five in their semi-final, scored six three times in the group matches, and they have a chance here, which is ended by Grimley, and then it came off his feet. to make contact but the Australians actually had two men over then John Potter Stephen Batchelor really hasn't been able to get into the game very much Davis for Australia and here's Walsh Obstruction was by the Australian, and a little sad to see that Walsh remonstrated with the umpire. As it becomes a more noted sport, it would be sad to think that its character would change. That's always been Walsh's character, though. Birmingham. Shawani not really alive to that. That's going all the way. Paul Barber. Well taken by the man. Craig Davis quickly in. Hit against Charlesworth. Stopped by Potter. Well, it seemed to me that Stephen Batchelor wasn't sure whether to go or stay. It's an England hit. Batch has been able, unable to get away and use his considerable pace. the ball in the circle anything like enough Grimley Shawani look at the cover by the Australians Joey Migo said Grimley and it's an England hit Shawani being held off again again an England hit and that really was what amounted to a cross-check by David Bell. Grimley knocks it straight in this time. Bachelor's stick was the nearest. No missing this time, just hit straight across the circle and Bachelor coming in from the far side. Six minutes of the first period of 35 remaining. The man. Oh, pity. The man. With determination from him. Hughes, Shawani is available. Good challenge by Batch. Now Shawani. Kelly. 
but uh, dangerous play. by the skipper, Bell, Charlesworth. It's uh, an Australian hit. In fact, just the hit in. Good stop. And obstruction by Mitten. Barber. Too strong. Potter. Another nearly. England quite often promised, but so far have not fulfilled. Dangerous player given. Barber. Potter. Collected by Birmingham. Changes the angle of attack. Good stop by Paul Barber. Came off the feet of Hughes. The umpire allowed the advantage. Good interception by Faulkner. And England losing possession again. Horgood. Long corner. Craig Davis comes forward. Match trying to lose his marker. And an England hit. Three minutes of the first half remaining. And how the complexion of this contest would change if England could manage a goal during that period. Australia have taken their chances, deserve to be in front, but the second goal was somewhat against the run of play at that, at that stage. Davis, Bell. Danny Bora and uh, John Shaw and Robert Cliff looking in. Stopped by Dodds. Well weighted by Bachelor. Good challenge by Holgood, who gets back to do his defensive work. This is better. Obstruction by Charlesworth. Two minutes of the half remaining, and offside against Sean Curley. So hit in. Kelly. Sixteen yard hit. Bachelor looking to go on the far right. Beautifully taken by Trevor King. And well used. This is Batch. Back again to Batch. Taylor getting the ball away with height and distance. Shiwani. Best of the cross. Shiwani checking where everybody is. Where 
inside the last 30 seconds of the first half. Obstruction by Walsh. Crowd encouraging England to get on with it. Grimley, it's got through. With a 16-yard hit. Richard Dodds, who got into the circle. comes to an end with the favourites leading by two goals to nothing Australia their first goal coming from Terry Walsh in the fifth minute and England failed to clear a bouncing ball and then from a penalty corner and the Australians have only had two England yet to have one from a penalty corner John Bestel scored the second goal so the halftime score, England nil, Australia two. Well, there we are, the England management, the uh, David Whitaker, the coach there. Well, he's got a lot to do in the next few minutes to lift this England side. He's done it before. Well, he's never done it against a side quite as good as these Australians. Disappointing first half, to say the least, for England, and with so much to do, in the second half, the second half of 35 minutes. Well, Jim Duth is uh, joining me from the commentary box. And Jim, it started going wrong right from the start. What was it, nerves, a reaction from yesterday, or what? Um, I think it was nerves. Um, it, the England didn't get off to a very good start. They weren't putting the stick in the ball. They weren't controlling it as they should. And it really let the Australians in to score an early goal. Um, there was a build-up of pressure beforehand. There's a long corner given to the Australian side. They convert it into a short corner, which is happening too many times at the moment. Um, let's, have, let's have a look at that uh, first goal then, Jim. Yes, certainly. And you were saying no one wants to concede an early goal, of course, yeah. but particularly goal, against the Australians. Yes, particularly in this game. And yes, against the Australians. Because um, they've always had trouble settling down in finals and semi-finals. They've come second so many times themselves that, uh, that I think they, they, this goal really did settle them down. And Walsh took it well. Uh, he's been their top goal scorer for many years and uh, I think he was absolutely delighted because I would uh, think this, this will be his last tournament. But there's quite a lot of slackness all around early on, around, around the, the marking situation, around the goal, wasn't there, from an England point of view? There was too much uh, ball watching, exactly. I mean, hockey's very much like football. I mean, you, you can't just let players wander around unmarked, and I'm afraid the English defence did that. To what extent was that incredible match yesterday uh, as shown a reaction today? I mean, they've got to build themselves up again after that great win, great mm. atmosphere. It must be very difficult. I know it's a World Cup final, but, but even so, they are human beings. Well, yes, that's true. They were naturally very delighted at uh, winning yesterday and it would take uh, for the younger ones I think a long time to get over that but the manager and the coach I think settled them down last night very well got them thinking about playing the Australians today um, one thing which is going to affect the English side as this game goes on I think there some of the players are very tired and stiff from yesterday and unfortunately with a semi-final final being played over the, the weekend, um, they haven't had a chance to rest. The Australians, on the other hand, cruised through a semi-final yesterday. By half-time, they'd already got it sewn up. They took of their elder, state, uh, elder statesmen off and uh, so they could rest them. So they have certainly come to this game better prepared. Well, England showed a few signs of getting back into the game after the first goal, and then came the second. Two penalty corners, as the Australians have had, and they've put them both away. Now, you would actually don't think this was a goal. You all shouldn't have been allowed. This, it looked like Bestel hit this too high to me. I don't know if he's got a deflection of uh, Taylor or hit him, because uh, Barry said uh, Ian certainly didn't complain. But to me, that ball was going up anyway. And if it got a deflection off him, it was very slight. And you can see that ball ends up right up by Richard Dodd's shoulder. So uh, I, can't, I can't honestly see that it really took a deflection. If it did take a deflection, I don't think it altered the, the path of the ball. So I, I, that should have been disallowed. In, uh, as far as I'm concerned. But it's, again, if you're going to concede ground and uh, give away short corners, this possibility always happens. Where England really want, to, uh, really want to be is up the other end. And if any mistakes happen in the, other, uh, the Australian circle, they might actually get a goal. 
Actually, that, that's, that's one disappointment or another disappointment from an England point of view. They've not really hurt the Australians at the back at all, have they, really? No. Showed a few um, signs near a half time with a few hard and lows across, but uh, apart from that, they're not really troubled. Them. I'm afraid the English midfield really hasn't um, um, given the forwards a great deal of good ball yet. Um, hopefully, that will come in the second half. Sean has had to go to search to get the ball. He's actually taken the ball off Australians. So he's coming further and further back, isn't and he? And because of that, he's had to come further back. Um, Stephen Batchelor hasn't got into the game yet. Imran Shawani, again, has been tackling well, been doing a lot of work defensively, but we would like him also to be used more in an attacking role. Um, I, put, I would think that um, David Whitaker will have to make a few substitutions now, yeah, as we, he did yesterday. Change? I can see Robert Clift coming on. Um, early in this second half. I wouldn't be surprised if he starts um, because I think he will control uh, Batch, Colin Batch, um, and hopefully he'll be able to feed the ball through because Norman is, I'm afraid, looking tired after yesterday's performance, mm -hmm. which I, I don't think is very surprising because he did more work than anybody else in the time he was on. Then I would think that John Shaw would come on as well. Um, I don't think Richard Lemann has been playing particularly badly but um, it just might need a change on that, in that position. We're talking about the problems of England, but, but let's be fair, they're a fair old side Australia, aren't they? They're, they're, they've been very uh, impressive throughout this competition, and, and they're doing so again today. Yes, I mean, they're, they're the one side which have dominated uh, this tournament so far, and they've dominated world hockey over the last, certainly the last five or six years. Um, but they've always slipped up at the last hurdle, and this is why, as I said earlier, it's so disappointing. Mm. England gave them that goal to start off with, which I'm sure settled them down. And it settled them down, obviously. We've got another Australian attack here, which brought Ian Taylor into action just before half-time. And you do get the feeling, don't you, that these Australians could score almost any time they come forward? Yes, they, they're, they're cutting uh, inroads through the English defence, but the English players are still working hard as I said, they're closing down as much as they can. I, I'm glad to see that they're not, they haven't uh, fallen back and given the Australians room. They're trying to get up as much as possible. But I'm afraid that's just another, that incident there is just a, another incident where we just cannot seem to get the ball away cleanly. Dave Faulkner on the ball has actually had a good game so far. He's getting up on his men, he's pushing through, he's in hockey, it's slightly different from put, football. Uh, the fullbacks actually really have to take the inside forwards um, if our, our inside forward can't get back onto him. And it's important, therefore, that those fullbacks get up and restrict their space. And we're trying to do that. Unfortunately, the Australian um, inside forwards are actually playing very well. And um, they are still running the game. Fortunately, they're not running the game right in our own 25, which they have been doing against other sides uh, during this tournament, and therefore have been building up you know, some very large scores. Well, actually, Ian Taylor wasn't brought into action there. <laughs> uh, I was having you on there, actually, uh, but he is now in this uh, sequence here. And um, again, this is very early in the match, and another sign of England not really being very safe at the back. That's right. This is a Mitten, I believe, on the ball, had a very good chance. Fortunately for England, he didn't control it straight away, but he's because he's a very lethal striker of the ball. But um, if, he, if England are going to succeed in this tournament or in, in this game, Ian's going to have to make a few more saves like that, I'm afraid, in the second half. And this is a, a different one coming up. Well, Can you, Jim, now see any way back? I mean, you've said that the Australians, quite rightly, are the most impressive team in the whole competition. Can you see any way back now? I know England have shown lots of spirit, but it'll take more than that, won't it? It will do. Um, I think they can. I think they can get back. Um, David Whitaker can li lift aside. He's he a very good very coach. He looked very down there, didn't he? When we he looked very looked down. I would think that he's just collecting himself before he actually goes and speaks to the team. Um, if England, England need to get an early goal, that's that. I think that's pretty well. They need an early goal. Some motivation going on there among the Australians as well. well. It's, <laughs> it's a World Cup final. That's not surprising. <laughs> But England do need this early goal. If they can get this early goal, I'm sure they will un unsettle the Australians as the game goes on. To what extent uh, is the motivation factor from this man, the captain, Paul Dunst? Very important. Um, Norman Hughes, uh, who used to be the captain of the England side, is a Yorkshireman, full of grit, 
makes a lot of noise. Um, in the, uh, Richard Dodds is a quieter individual, but he, individ uh, he goes around players individually and picking them up and getting the best from them in, his, in, a, in a quiet way, but a very effective way. Yeah, Richard was an inspiration yesterday, wasn't he? Well, that save off the line in the extra time just turned the game for England. I mean, I don't think they would have come back if um, West Germany scored then. But he's, he's done a marvellous job this tournament and on previous occasions as well for England. Tell me, you're an England player. What goes on? What's being said here? Um, I would think that he's uh, just... The coach has obviously just had a word with him, and I think he, um, Richard's just putting his final touch to it. I think he's really just uh, dishing it out saying that, well, you haven't really got another chance. So here we go then. 35 minutes for England. John Shaw, the sub on. 35 minutes for England to save this World Cup final. 2-0 down, back to Barry Davis. And I think it was significant that uh, Colin Woolley and David Whitaker took the team off to the dressing room, which doesn't always happen at half-time. What well, was clearly a chat-in, and the arrival of John Shaw suggests that the emphasis has got to be to give it a real go. And Shaw immediately in the action. Richard LeMann is the player who has come off. And England immediately get a long corner. Well, in fact, it's quickly taken by Australia. Faulkner, Charlesworth, Very busy start, the sort of start that England wanted to make right at the opening of the match, but didn't. <laughs> Statistics can often be overused in sport, but I think the facts that England have managed 12 goals in this championship so far, and the Australians now 31. But here is Sean Curley. Oh, what a pity. But if England can play like that, the whole thing could be turned round. If the ball can be got through and we can see the face from Curley, from Shiwani and from Batchelor, supplemented by Shaw, then we could get back into this contest. But even so, as I was saying, 31 goals in six and a half matches is quite a record by Australia. Kelly has struck four times. I imagine that just about everyone in this huge crowd, probably something around 12,000, We'll be feeling that what a difference an early goal in this half could make. Warren Birmingham stopped by Hughes initially and then obstruction given. Tommy Batch. Batchelor. And he was obstructed. And Craig Davis was not five yards. <laughs> and Walsh was holding Shaw. So England moving into the opposition half with a succession of short hits. Potter. Faulkner. All good quickly up at him. That's been very typical of the way the Australian wide players, wingers, have got back to cover any attack on the flanks by England. Short. Potter. Stopped by Horgood. It's Australia's. Hit for the obstruction. Trevor King. Warren Birmingham. Bell is square. 
Well played by Hughes. Oh, no. Well, Hughes looks back in amazement. The Spanish umpire has given a penalty corner, presumably for dangerous play, the stick too high. But if that was above the shoulder, well, then I'm a Dutchman. I can only think it was actually given for dangerous play by playing the ball at the Australian. Well, actually, he played it in disgrace, to be fair. I think he tried to, and uh, certainly the Australians put the ball up in the air in the first case. Anyway, penalty corner it is, and Warren Birmingham will take it. And they took too long. <laughs> well, it's an interest again. Well, let's have a look. Was it above the shoulder? Was it not at an Australian player? Well, to be fair to the umpire, the Australian did have to duck. Well, my opinion of that is that Deo, uh, the Spanish umpire, might have realised his mistake and then gave the free hit to England. Hughes. Shawani. Kelly, Shawani. Yes, no! For a moment it bounced up behind the balls, but it just missed the post. But listen to the change of atmosphere here. Taken by Dots. And Snowden able to let it go. On from Grimley. Sean Curley took it off the defender stick. Shawani. And wide of the left post from his viewpoint. Fortner down. And the official crowd figure not quite as great as I said on 11,000. in the tournament as uh, David Icke told you West Germany finished third for the bronze medal Soviet Union were fourth and then in order came Spain Argentina the Netherlands Poland New Zealand Canada and at the bottom of the pile of 12 Pakistan and the wooden spoonist India what a change in how hockey used to be Potter it's a good start for the second half by England. But the hit is Australia's here. Obstruction by Hughes. A little over eager. Good challenge by Barber. Hughes has gone down hurt. And it's hugely competitive at the moment. Potter just holding his stick on it. And the hit is given against Holgood. Four good. Good stick in from David Faulkner. And uh, the cross running and the obstruction off the wall gives England the hit. Dodds. Potter. Good running by Hughes. On to Curley. It's England's hit. About five yards or so. A little more perhaps outside the circle. Short. Curley. Going for the instant swing. Denied by Craig Davis. 
this is far better from England. They're much more aggressive, much quicker, and indeed more confident. Sure. England hit again. Dodds to Potter. To Batchelor. Good cover by King. Potter. Again, England's hit. And the home side pressing hard here. Penalty corner. The ball undercut, played dangerously by the defender, who was uh, Craig Davis, into the crowd. And Monsieur Renault says penalty corner. And the first chance in the contest for the hero of 24 hours ago, Paul Barber. Good save, and cover on the line by Davis. Shawani, long corner. We've had ten minutes of the second half, and England have been on top in that spell. Look again at the penalty corner. It's a good strike. Snowden took the sting out of it, and Davis covered him on the line. Live Australia in possession. Denied it by Hughes. Dodds. Curly was coming the other way. There is. Hughes. Hit against uh, Bell. Potter. Every Australian back. But this is a good comeback by England, Jim. England make a spirited fight here, and uh, they have to, and they're doing very well at the moment. But they're pushing players up and back, and to be very careful about these breaks the Australians might be making as the game goes on. Their group matches in Group B, the Australians won four of the five. They were held by West Germany. Although observers at that time did rather feel that when it reached 2-2 that both sides settled for the point. Charlesworth. Long corner. And some good stick work. By Rick Charlesworth. Rising 34. Penalty corner given. For the obstruction in the circle. Uh, the Australian's second goal, I thought, came slightly against the run of play at the time. Festal. And the ball was not properly stopped. And history was not repeated. <laughs> Has to be cleanly stopped, but it was not. <laughs> and as we look to that replay, England have made a very quick substitution. It will be a Bora coming on in place of Stephen Batchelor to play on the right wing. Trevor King. So England have made two of their allowed three substitutions. Birmingham. Recover by Potter. Strong 
construction on Shiwani. Shiwani. Grimley to change the angle by that movement. Barber, England pushing up onto the halfway line, up the stick of Shaw. Stopped by Dodds. Bora. Good play, the umpire read it well too, what a pity. The umpire fully appreciating that uh, there was a foul there. The whistle came up, but he didn't blow it. He allowed uh, Bora to go on. Potter. Short. Good challenge by Birmingham. <laughs> Very strong and effective challenge by Barber. Left Walsh on the deck inadvertently. Certainly needed to make that tackle there because Wall should have been through. Bora. Did it come up on feet? Curly almost stole it. Penalty corner. Oh, credit to the England team. This is a hugely uplifting comeback. They looked very depressed when they went off the field at halftime. But the halftime chat was brought out a very different side for the second period. Potter, Curley, Barber, another good, another good save. Still Potter. And it just will not run. Dodds. Stopped by Charlesworth. And the Australians getting everyone back. And they now wish to make a substitution. Paul Good is the player coming off. Let's, let's look again at how close England came. A good save. And then Potter trying to work a position. And again, Snowden doing well. Back come England again. And Australia now have Peter Hazelhurst, number 11, on in place of Hawgood. Birmingham. Played by Martin Grimley. England's hit. Feet by Bestel. Dodds. Instruction given. And Bora was the nearest to the cross by Richard Dodds. England running the match, though, at the moment, Jim. They are. They've, they've really come back in this game very well. And they've just got to keep going. I mean, they've got to have the belief that if they keep putting this amount of pressure on the Australians, that they will get a goal in the end. And if that does happen, I think the Australians will start to panic, naturally. I think already they may be feeling that uh, England have proved their most difficult opponents. Well, I think um, when the tournament started, uh, Australians have always done, uh, or let's put England have always done well against Australia. And so West Germany, and I think West Germany and England would have been the two sides they would have feared. England's hit just outside the circle. Really must make those count there to get the ball into the circle. Faulkner. Potter. Batch. Hit given against Dodds. <laughs> the 
quite what was intended and England's hit where the ball landed. White ball again. Dangerous play by Potter lifting the ball. Long shadows. It's now being played in really pleasant autumn sunshine. And the weather really throughout this uh, tournament has been quite excellent. And I've just been handed the official figures for the tournament. Hockey has been watched here at Wilsdon by 92,217 people. And every hope of the World Hockey Board and the chairman of that board, Phil Appleyard, has really been realised here. Irrespective, I think, of the result of this afternoon. England going right through to the final. And the two best teams from the group contests meeting to decide the outcome. Now, Hughes is the player down. The umpire is calling the Australian skipper to him. Well, that was a quite blatant body check. Indeed, sufficiently blatant that David Bell has been sent off for a minimum of five minutes. We don't know exactly how many minutes the umpire says. It's up to his discretion, which I think maybe is a law that could be changed so the public are kept informed. But Australia will play with 10 men, and the clock has stopped at 15 minutes and 16 seconds remaining. I think, Barry, they've been mostly off for about five minutes, and then hopefully during this period, England can make use of the extra man. Grimm is recovered. A lot of players in the opposition 25, but nothing to feed on from the hit. Quarter of an hour remaining of this final and of this sixth World Hockey Cup. Collected by Walsh, but nobody was up to support him. Which I think is indicative of how the balance of play has changed. But Australia still two goals to the good. Stake by Potter, really. Batch. Birmingham. Destruction by Faulkner. Far from sitting back on it with uh, one man short, the Australians have immediately turned to the attack. Faulkner. And uh, the band of captains here has been passed to Trevor King. That's what the delay was about. John Bestel. By Hughes, but well, it's Australia's hit. King stopped by Dodds, looking to get Shawani away here. He'll be rather telegraphed the pass. And, uh, Charlesworth is the player who's moved to right back in the absence of the captain. Charlesworth, the former captain and the most experienced player in the team. And the green card. Being shown to a second Australian. That's just a warning to Colin Batch. Barber. Dodds with a little bit of space to move into. Faulkner. afford to give away possession like that. Barber. Faulkner given the opportunity to try again. Good challenge by Walsh. Curley waiting in the circle. Shawani on the left side. 
comes to Curley, obstructed by Vestal. Ling would do well to knock the ball in early. It's quite often with Curley around, somebody gets obstructed. But this time it's Australia's hit. You can't get the ball into the circle, you can't score. Davis. Missed by Grimley. Here's Grant Mitten, Peter Hazelhurst, lost control, fortunately for England. Now Walsh. What an opportunity wasted by Australia. That could have killed the match and decided the outcome. That was certainly a great escape for England there. And it's not like Walsh missed chances like that. Hazelhurst. Australia's hit in. Walsh. All very tight. And obstruction by Hazelhurst. Bora allowed to continue. Hughes, Curley. And the hit for the challenge on Curley, who has been given very little room in this contest. Shaw, Barber, Faulkner, Bora, obstruction by Hazelhurst, it's good running, Curley gets it in early, Hughes, Chwani! Well, the chance was certainly there, good running by Curley, lost his marker, the instant cross, Mistake by Charlesworth, and I think the aggressive challenge by Charlesworth on Shawani was a factor there, Jim. It was. It was very well set up by actually uh, by Kubo Bora, who fed the ball there through, and uh, it's certainly making an impact on this game so far. by Birmingham. Hazelhurst. And Australians playing virtually with just two up now. And now those two get behind the ball as England have the hit. Potter. Short. Ten minutes left. Hughes calling for it. And collects. Bora. 16-yard hit. And the sport is full of if-onlys, but I'm afraid if the score changes, it doesn't change, then England will look back and ask themselves why they didn't play in the first half as they played in the second. Five minutes have elapsed, back comes David Bell for Australia. previous matches, except against the West Germans. Two goals by Australia has led to a very comfortable victory with more goals following, but not today. Barber, a little bit fortunate, but it's his hit. hit again. Australians wait to make us another substitution. Bora, Hazelhurst, Trevor King. Australia's hit. And Dean Evans still waiting and it's interesting here that uh, Grant Mitten is the player to be withdrawn so Australia hanging on to what they hold, bringing on a more defensive player. 
Well, with only about eight minutes to go, we've got a, a large partisan Wilson crowd, and it's in the game against West Germany, this crowd lifted the English players to new heights. We we'll just have to see if they can do it again today. Barber, and all by Ian Taylor in the Australian half of the field. Grunt from Walsh. Barber. Hit in to be taken again. Davis. Potter. Beat by King. Curly starts the move for the inside right position. Was aimed at Norman Hughes. Bell to Bestel. Dangerous play. I think the hit is from the place of impact. Indeed, it is. Paul Barber. Yes! John Potter! The point that's been made, if you bang the ball into the circle, you quite often get a rebound. The rebound came off the goalkeeper, and Potter on the reverse sticks, finding the empty goal. The clock ticks on, six minutes and 16 seconds remaining. Australia to England now one. Stirring stuff to the last in this championship. John Potter, who scored two penalty strokes before, puts England back with hope. Ball boys from Gresham School in Norfolk. He puts the ball down on the spot for England. Potter is well forward. Dodds loses possession. Good challenge by Barber, who's had an excellent match. Curley has renewed enthusiasm from players and spectators alike. The hit is against King. The possession is with Bora. The obstruction, no. Craig Davis comes away. Great challenge by Hughes. England's hit in. I beg your pardon, it must have come off an England stick because it's Australia's. Hazelhurst, offside. We're inside the last five minutes. Dodds, Barber. Out of Walsh was five yards. Indeed, the hit will be given again, but unfortunately, a few seconds have been lost. Barber. Shaw unable to take it. Craig Davis. Stopped by Hughes. Shirani threatening, so is Shaw. Clearance by Bestel. Dodds to Potter. Trying to find some room to get the ball into the circle. England's hit. Dodds to Potter. Off the feet. No. Long corner. Just listen to the noise. chances left so I hope they take their time over this just calm themselves down I can we can we can only hope 
Barber deflected for the long corner. Good challenge out by Warren Birmingham. Penalty corner again against David Bell. Came from stick to feet. And the pressure on Australia from all sides. Curly. Baba. Oh. And Baba knows how close it was. Two and a half minutes left. Back come England again. Dodds. Challenged by Batch. His feet. England's hit. No time to be wasted. 16 yard hit. The clock says two minutes left. Shaw. Trying to resist the challenges. Fouled by Batch. Barber. Grimley. Good challenge by Batch. Shaw. Hughes. It's Australia's hit. Hazelhurst. Kelly. Obstruction by Davis. Hit taken quickly by Dodds. Great challenge by Charlesworth. We're into the last minute. Faulkner. Charlesworth. Faulkner. Thirty-five seconds remaining. Barber's got to look for the long one. The long one it is. Shawani goes off in search, but cannot find. Bestel with a 16-yard hit for Australia. It's a good one. And Hazelhurst just has need to keep possession. Inside the last 15 seconds, England's hit. Taylor comes to take it. Forward by Grimley, stopped by Birmingham. The last five seconds. The Australians celebrate. England end this sixth World Cup on top. But Australia take the trophy, winning an excellent final. But had two very contrasting halves by two goals to one. England really giving themselves too much ground to recover from a very nervous start. And what a contrast, the expression of Paul Barber from just 24 hours ago. But certainly, that is the toughest match that Australia have had. And the tournament was given a fitting climax. This is a, a superb performance by the England side. I think they can be proud of what they've achieved today. The Australians are definitely the world number one. They certainly were before the tournament and proved it today. And England were the only team which could give them a, a run for their money. And that second half, the comeback, to get a goal and to that final a flurry at the end was a, a, a great performance by the England team. And I think everybody can be proud of what they put in. And I think one has to look back to the success in the Olympic Games with Great Britain. Has now been followed. Bronze it was then. Under the same coach, David Whitaker, silver it is now for England. It could well be that the next World Cup, we will be under the banner of Great Britain. That is something that has to be resolved. But what is for sure is that hockey in this country is still on the up and up. And the game has captured the interests of a much wider public.
than it had before this tournament started. And the sport of hockey is now deserving of the sponsorship and help that it deserves to take further places forward. A good final which ends with disappointment for the England players. But Australia winning by two goals to one. Their goals scored by Walsh in the fifth minute and Bestel in the 24th minute. And England coming back with an excellent performance in the second half. Their goal scored by John Potter with just seven minutes remaining. Australia take the trophy, but England have come out of this sixth World Cup with a huge amount of credit. Haven't they just? You've got a feel for the magnificent second half performance by England.